hydrate valves okay so quick summary of sum to infinity basically what you should know is this is the formula that you're going to use this formula is available or is typed out on your formula sheet you should know that it has a condition to it and that this condition over here tells us that um this series or geometric series is going to be converging and that's when we know we can use the sum to infinity if i write it in sigma notation this is what it would look like okay remember this is our upper limit this is the bottom limit or lower limit and you'd be substituting from one into the place of n continuing continuing until you get your answer okay or your Term. sorry not your answer until you get however many terms but in this case over here it's given us the symbol infinity therefore you know that oh okay i just need to get the first two or three terms to get my a value to figure out my r value and then sub it back into this formula that i just mentioned i also wrote down for you guys the types of questions that they ask for sum to infinity um, the first one, the easiest one, is calculating a particular answer by just substituting into the formula, okay? Easy peasy, you're just subbing your A value, subbing your R value, type it in on your calculator, get an answer. The second is where we give you the sum to infinity amount. We maybe give you the A value and then ask you to find R, okay? Um, or we maybe make you calculate this where you have to solve for the A value. I wrote here N, but I did not mean N. I was supposed to just write A and R. Let's scratch this part out over here. Okay, the third one is to determine the values of X and or k or p or t or whatever variable they give you if the series is converging i'm going to do an example of that and then um, another nice question that they like asking or that i've seen in the classroom mathematics textbook that i was using is how to convert a recurring decimal to a fraction we all know how to use the grade 10 method where we say let x equal what if we use our knowledge of the sum to infinity to actually convert the de recurring decimal to fraction? So I'll show you how to do one of those. And lastly, the difficult or the super difficult ones, the word problems that most students hate or the application type of questions that most students hate. Okay. Okay. So we're starting with the easy peasy ones. Okay. Um, this one over here, the instruction, I, mean, I took these questions from classroom mathematics. Okay, this question over here said that you should find the sum to infinity. Okay, so we're going to tell you find the sum to infinity. How do I calculate this? I'm going to first work out the ratio, right? I can see that the ratio is 1 over 5, but I'm just going to show for the learners that didn't... Oh, I'm out of focus. For the learners that don't know how to get to that 1 over 5, we know that this is a geometric series. Therefore, it has a common ratio. How do you work that out? You take the second term divided by the first term. So 7 over 5 divided by 7. And there we go. That's how I got that answer. The second one was 7 over 25 divided by 7 over 5. So that's term 3 divided by term 2. And it gives me 1 over 5. Okay, so that's how I worked it out. All right. We've got the A value, we've got the R value. Let's go sum to infinity. And you can see that the R value is actually between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so the common ratio is within that um, condition that I gave you. A over 1 minus R between that. Right? So this here is going to be 7 over 1 minus 1 over 5. I'm going to plug this in on my calculator. And there we go. That's our answer. When we say sum to infinity, does it mean that we add in an infinite amount of numbers? No, absolutely not. You would have noticed by now, because I'm assuming that everyone that's watching this video has heard of sum to infinity or you know more or less what you're talking about you would have noticed that with sum to infinity as you keep adding more terms in this geometric series that has a common ratio between negative one and one you would have noticed that this number is getting closer and closer to uh, oh no sorry the sum of this 
things over here is getting closer and closer and closer to a particular number okay and so when we're doing the sum to infinity we're trying to figure out what number it's approaching or what number it's getting closer and closer and closer towards okay so we're not adding an infinite amount of numbers that makes absolutely no sense anyway second question i want to work out the common ratio over here i noticed that it's one over four one over four how did i do that i took term two divided by term one you can do the whole calculation if you want to and term three divided by term two and it gives me one over four okay sum to infinity Okay, I'm subbing in the values. I've got 5x. S is x in this case over here is our unknown variable. But we're subbing it in, right? 1 minus quarter, which gives me 5x over this part over here is 3 quarter. How did I get that? 1 is the same thing as 4 over 4. So 4 minus 1 giving me 3. Okay. Um, while this is technically correct, I'm not going to leave my answer like this. Whenever I see a fraction in the denominator, I'm going to do tip in times. So this gives me 5x times 4 over 3, which is 20x. So I forgot the x. 20x over 3. Next question. I've written one out for you in sigma notation so that you can get familiar with that. Okay. For this here... We're going to expand it just for you to understand what's happening. The first term is basically, oh, that's a 5, 1 minus 1. The second term is 2 minus 1. And the third term is 3 minus 1. And it continues and continues and continues. If I have to walk this part out, I end up with 1. How do I know that? 1 minus 1 in the exponent is 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. This one over here is going to be 1 over 5. And if you want, you can use your calculator. This one here is 1 over 25. Continues like this. I didn't have to do all of this. I just wanted to show you. I basically needed the A value and I need the common ratio. But I could have easily gotten the common ratio from this part over here. That's the ratio value sum to infinity condition is 1 over 5 between these two numbers yes absolutely so we can sub in and i'm going to type it in on my calculator to simplify five over four Try one more with sigma notation. Okay, I'm going to expand this. Okay, this one over here is one, nine times one is nine. This one over here is going to be negative. Six. I'm double checking. Nine times negative two over three to the one. There we go. Negative six. And the last one is plus four. Okay. All right. Last one from what I wrote. Number continues and continues. So, sum to infinity. Oh, my infinity symbol. Sum to infinity, a over 1 minus r, writing down my condition, is my ratio between these numbers. How do I work it out? Negative 6 divided by 9 is negative 2 over 3. 4 divided by negative 6 is basically negative 2 over 3. Yes, this number is between negative 1 and 1. We sub it in. Every time I sub something in and I notice that there's a minus sign in front of it, my habit is to just put it in a bracket, okay, so that I don't mix up or don't forget that this negative and negative give me a positive. I'm going to plug this whole thing in onto the calculator. Oops. There we go.
27 over 5. And there we go, that was the easy peasy stuff to do. Um, substitute into the formula. Alright, we're going on to something slightly more diff different. Okay, this one over here is written as words, but it's that question that I told you where you're solving for an unknown in the particular thing. So it says the sum to infinity of a geometric series. Always remember that sum to infinity can only work for a geometric series not arithmetic it doesn't work okay so they're telling us the sum to infinity is equal to 15. they're telling us the common ratio 2 over 3 they want us to determine the first three terms in order to get the first three terms i have to get the first one okay so sum to infinity is a over 1 minus r isn't that correct okay then I'm going to substitute what I have. This is 15 equals, A is what I'm looking for, 1 minus 2 over 3. I'm going to multiply both sides by the 1 minus 2 over 3 to get A on its own. Gives me 5. Now I know my first three terms are going to be 5. Oops, it's a series, so we're going to use the addition. Multiplied by 2 over 3 is going to give me 10 over 3. Multiplied by 2 over 3 is going to give me 20 over 9. Okay, how do I know that's what I'm multiplying by? Because they, we figured it out, the common ratio is that. I'm just double checking my answers. Times 2 over 3. Yes, it gives me 10 over 3. Times 2 over 3. It gives me 20 plus 9. Okay, those are the first three terms of this particular series that they wanted. And then another question. I'm going to try and keep this really short compared to where I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hurry up. That's what I wanted to say. I'm going to hurry up through this video, okay? In an infinite sequence of circles, the radius of the first circle is 90 centimeters. I'm just going to draw a circle here. We've got a radius of 90 centimeters. And the radius of each successive circle is two thirds of its predecessor. So how do I work that out? So I'm going to say the first one is 90. What's the next one? It's two thirds of it. So 90 times 2 over 3. You can walk a bit faster. And it gives me that the next one is 60. And the next one is going to be again times 2 over 3, which is 40. And if I wanted the next one, I would say the same thing. Since it's plugged in on my calculator, I can just press equals. And there's the next number. Okay. It says, find the sum of the areas of the circles. Now, this is radius right radius radius what would the area be for each one of these we know that the formula for area is pi let's write it over here pi r squared so that means this here is going to be pi times our radius squared plus pi times our radius squared plus pi times our radius squared Okay, that's what our um, formula for areas is. I'm going to simplify this. This gives me 8100 pi plus 60 squared is 3600 pi and 40 squared is, um, 4 squared is 1600, sorry. 16, no, 4 squared is 16 and then there's two zeros. That's what I mean to say. All right. There we go. Now we want the common ratio. You see, because there's a pi here and a pi here, they're basically going to cancel out, okay? And the common ratio, we're coming back to the same thing that we had initially. So we got, and I'll show you with the pi. 3600 zero, zero, um, shift pi over 8100 zero, zero, shift pi. It should give us 4 over 9. How do I get that 4 over 9? It's the radius squared. Uh, I mean, sorry, the ratio squared over 9. Not the ratio squared. Sorry, I'm mixing up so many words here. I meant the original um, what, the, what did they call this thing over here? Basically that 
what each number we had to multiply by. That's what I meant to say. Sorry, so many mistakes, guys. My apologies. Now to work out some to infinity. We've got the first term with the pi over 1 minus radius, I um, mean ratio. Ratio is between those values. And I'm going to get the answer over here with the pi. Don't forget it. Oops, shift pi, 1 minus 4 over 9. So pi, and I'm going to press the SD button and round off to two decimal places. Or two. Uh, what if they give us this? This was in centimeters. Since we're working with area, this would be centimeters squared. Alright, next question. It says, for a geometric series, the sum to infinity is 9,000 and the first term is 1,000. Calculate the common ratio. So again, we are given two bits of information. We want to solve for the third one. We know sum to infinity right we know what the actual value of the sum to infinity is we know that the first term is it is a thousand so a is a thousand one minus our ratio we now have to solve for this okay i am going to cross multiply giving me nine thousand one minus r equals a thousand I want to get rid of this 9,000. So I divide both sides by 9,000, leaving me with 1 over 9. I don't want this 1 over here. I take it over. So we've got 1 over 9 minus 1. And I don't want the negative sign over there, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative. I get my ratio is 8 over 9. Okay, next question for your geometric series sum to infinity is 9000 and the ratio is negative 0 comma 11 find the first term similar to what we did over there first term is a 1 minus our ratio see again it's negative I'm gonna put that in a bracket and this year, sorry, this value over here that was told is 9,000. Okay, I edit the two. I'm going to get red. Oh, that's looking like a 9. It's an A. I want to get rid of this denominator so that I can get A on its own. In order to do that, I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 plus 0, 11. So 9,000 times oops times one one plus zero comma eleven a is equal to nine 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 zero it says for which values of x will the geometric series converge that's the question that I was talking about for these type of types of things you have to know that the property of a converging series is that you have to know that i apologize it is raining where i am so i'm pretty sure you can hear the thunder in the background of this video i really apologize for this we need to figure out this ratio over here this ratio over here in order to do that I'm going to say this one divided by this one, which gives me 1 plus x. This one divided by this one gives me 1 plus x. This one divided by this one gives me 1 plus x. Therefore, I'm going to put the 1 plus x over there. It's less than 1, negative 1. Now we're solving an inequality that we learned in grade 10. In order to do this, you take this over that side and that side, minus 1. 1 minus 1. It is a positive 1 here. When I take it over, it's minus. When I take it over that side, it's minus. This giving me negative 2. 
1 minus 1 is 0. And that's my answer. And the last question that I have, oh, and one I have to do with recurring decimals. This one over here, my common ratio is, okay, let's finish this up. Sorry, I had to pause. Okay, this year we're finding the ratio, so you're taking term, three, uh, term 2 divided by term 1, giving me 2x over here, 2x over here, 2x, okay? We know the condition marker has to be between negative 1 and 1 therefore 2x must be oh, out of focus must be between 1 sorry I need to get rid of this 2 so I'm dividing here by 2 what I do there I have to do here and I have to do here giving me x is between negative half and half and lastly I'm just going to do one with the recurring decimal just to show you guys let's say I hit 2 comma 1 3 recurring okay this here is the same thing as 2 plus 13 over 100 why 100 there's two places then there's another 13 this time it's over two places but another two more plus 13 1 2 three four five six etc 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 okay this part this part over here is basically the record i mean the sum to infinity okay so this here is two plus so we're going to work out the sum to infinity the first term is 13 over 100 one minus our ratio oh let me put this Two separately like that our ratio between this is 1 over 100 I'm gonna plug this thing onto the calculator let's wrap this video up 13 over 100 1 minus 1 over 100 99 and there we go it's changed from a decimal to a fraction. You can always double check your answer, press the SD button and see it's the exact same thing. And I am done.